hello there it has been a while since my last uh, vlog and this is one of the reasons why i had to finish up most of the van work and it took a couple of weeks to do it so i thought i'd just make a separate video for this i'd also thought i'd share some of the thoughts on what the build has been like and what it's like doing all the work yourself there's still a small number of finishing touches i need to do but 98 percent of the van is now finished so I originally got in touch with Nate Murphy in 2017 before buying and making my first van. I got the idea and just decided to go for it, no prior experience. So I watched his YouTube videos and got the van building guide and sent him an email with some questions. We got chatting and he advised me on some stuff I didn't understand. And when the van was done, he ended up doing a van tour of my first van build. Anyway, it turned out he was going to be in the UK in June and wanted to do another van tour with my new van. So I really wanted it to be pretty much done by the time we got here. It's a really great opportunity to share some of my artwork and get some promotion done. And also, it was just a really good reason to finally finish up the build. There was a few bits and bobs I needed to do that I've just been putting off doing for several reasons. I've also been struggling to find the time as I've got a lot of work on. And I'm slightly lying, I've also been lacking motivation to finish it up. The main thing was the back doors. I've installed two windows on the back doors and I really wanted to make sure that I had some sort of secure blackout curtains or blinds. I couldn't bear the thought of making curtains again, I also really don't like how most curtains look. So I had a look at what my options were and I came across Tambour doors which is really popular to use in van builds and I really like this idea, although I didn't like the look of how most Tambour doors that you could buy ready made looked. So I wanted to make my own. The main challenge with this was building the framework around it, which would need very precise measurements in order for the blinds to work correctly. So this was the plan for the design. This is the back door with the window. The main issue with the timber doors is that they've got to have straight tracks for the shutters to run through. And the metal around the window is curved. So when I attach the plywood to the doors, it will also curve. My solution to this was to build a protruding structure that was straight that I could attach the rails to. The plywood I'm using is 8mm, which is quite thin. In order for the attachments on the sides to be secure, I had to attach some small wood blocks alongside the inner edge of the frame. So I made a structure a little smaller than the actual window so that there would be space enough for wood blocks. So another reason I needed to build this as a bit of a protruding structure was that Tambo doors require to have two spirals that collects the doors when they are opened. So the doors stay flat when they are down and then when you push them up they kind of get pushed into a spiral that, that stores the door whilst it's up or open. The spirals are 12 centimeters on the diagonal. There actually was a gap in the metal that was just perfect for this. Here's a bit of time lapse of the building of this and attaching the ready-made bits of plywood that makes the window frame. So in between showing you what I've been doing the last few weeks, I thought I'd just tell you shortly about my experience about building a van yourself. First, Let's start with the fun bits. I love designing things. And the most fun for me was definitely designing it. I had a slightly bigger budget on this van as I sold my first van, which meant that I could upgrade a few things that I've been missing in my first van, which was really exciting. I love researching colors, textures, and different solutions. I spent hours researching how to build a Murphy bed on YouTube and I spent hours working out the floor plan in UK lockdown 1.0. I made floor plans and colour combinations all in Photoshop where I also screen grabbed photos of all the appliances that I used and tried to get them down to the measurements I thought they would be in the actual van build and put them in. It was a bit of a mishmash but it does allow you to see what it's kind of potentially going to look like when it's done and I like to be able to see and envision what it's going to look like before I start. I felt really motivated when I started the build and for the first month I kept a really good pace. I was generally taking 10 to 15 hours a day, only taking time off when my body needed rest. By the second month I was really starting to feel it. Lockdown was also starting to be lifted and I started back at my old part-time work, which in combination was just really draining. Uh, my part-time work is quite physical, it's building markets. Where, for example, the longest shift is five hours of fairly rigorous physical work. I also think that the first stages of building a van, which is like installing the vents, solar panels, putting wires in place, installation and the general skeleton of the van is pretty straightforward and quick to do. And I think I got most of those done in the first two to three weeks. So it feels like you're making really quick progress. Oh, and then 
there was also a few weeks where I was struggling because I got a concussion at work which kind of really fucked up my mood and motivation. When I designed the van and roughly worked out how to build it, I was mindful that I wanted to try and go for easy and time-saving solutions where I could. So for example, I opted for spray painting panels instead of stained cladding. I say this because I spent hours and days staining and varnishing the cladding in my first van. It looked and felt great, but man, I never wanted to touch varnish ever again in my life. This solution for sure did save me a lot of time. It's usually when you start doing the more intricate things, like building cupboards and stuff, that things start to get really tricky and annoying. The main reason for this is that there is not a single straight wall in the van. Everything needs to be custom made and custom cut if you are to make the most out of the space and your money, and it's really hard to find a good reference point for what, what's actually straight and being able to measure things accurately. Towards the end of the second month, I was really burned out. Here's the thing, building a van is just really hard and physical work. Bearing in mind that I'm just one person and I did 90% of the work by myself and I mean like I held up the cupboard doors while I screwed in the hinges by myself. The only thing I didn't build was my bed. By the time November came, which was about two and a half months in, I barely had the motivation to pick up a tool. It was also getting pretty cold and miserable working outside. By then, most of the van build was done, the most important bits anyway, like the electricity, the gas appliances and the water system was all up and running and it was basically just a lot of cupboard building and finishing touches. I think at this point everyone around me was way more excited about building a van than me. I didn't want to talk about van, I had to unfollow loads of van accounts on Instagram and just get a bit of distance from the whole thing. There's also the other stuff which nobody quite mentions. Um, and that is, shit is gonna go wrong. And when shit goes wrong, you lose out on money and time. Um, I had a particularly gruesome week where there was a water leak in my van, which I had no idea where it was coming from. And it turned out it was dripping inside of the wall from where the shower was. And basically to get it fixed, I needed a new part and then the new part broke and then I had to wait longer, etc, etc, etc. Sometimes when things go wrong in the van, the most annoying thing is troubleshooting. Because sometimes you have no idea where the leak is coming from, you have no idea why maybe some electricity isn't working and you wonder, oh my god, is there a wire that is underneath all of it that I'm going to have to find out and rip out and find again? Or whatever it is but now I feel lots better about it and um, I really needed some distance from all the hard work now that I'm actually starting to use it and starting to be able to think about going away with it it's really cool and I'm starting to really love it and I'm finally in a place where I'm starting to be able to appreciate all the hard work I put into it one of the reasons why it's also so frustrating is because you have to use your brain in quite a specific way to figure out how to build it when custom cutting things, you do have to put quite a lot of focus on getting things right. It's not the same as mindlessly just like assembling IKEA furniture or building Legos. Like the times when I was too tired, those were the times when I take a wrong measurement and ultimately create more work for myself by fucking something up. There's also a lot of research to do. I knew most of it from the first van, but all the plumbing was new and I spent hours trying to find out what was the right size pipes and fittings and how to get the camper van stuff into, like the camper van size measurements into a normal sized mixer bar. It's also all the small things that you don't think about, like how, how to actually attach the shower mixer bar to the wall which I found some brackets on a really obscure site online. It's also the raging frustration of when I do fuck something up, the amount of money it will cost to replace that part or that thing on a limited budget was very frustrating. Here's a shot of the bits for the inner frame, all stained and varnished, about four layers. The window sills are made from an old scaffolding board and the sides were made from the plywood from the old van lining. As you can see, they're all custom cut to fit the van exactly and they attached perfectly to the small wood blocks inside of the frame. The rails and the spirals I just got off eBay of a van conversion seller and they're all pretty cheap. I think the two sets cost me around £20. This was the biggest cost in making these blinds. Everything else I already had the materials for. These are pretty universal and super easy to work with. The rails cut to measure and I just glued it to the wood sides with Gorilla Glue. 
So when I researched timbre doors on YouTube, it seemed pretty straightforward. Basically it's a bunch of strips, traditionally wood, glued on some fabrics. So I cut a ton of small strips from 3mm ply with a table saw, stained and varnished them, which was the thing that took the most time. I could have just spray painted them, but I really like the dark brown, slightly rustic looking wood stain. After I attached the rails to the sides, I measured the distance between the rails, cut all the wood to measure and glued it to a repurposed old canvas fabric I had laying around. It was a little tricky to get it all flat, so I had to weigh it down whilst the glue dried. So this was the moment of truth. I was quite nervous because if it didn't work, I'd have to either make curtains or spend more money on another solution. When the glue had dried, I cut the excess fabric off and slotted it into the rails. Much to my own delight, it fitted pretty well. It actually turned out the fabric was a little thin for the blinds to work smoothly. So what I did later was to take some old floor insulation I had lying around for my first van build actually. I don't know why I, actually, I didn't throw it out, but anyway which is basically a thin layer of foam with a silver vapour barrier and I attached it with some carpet spray to the back. This made the blinds much more stable and solid to pull up and down as well as providing extra insulation and reflect the heat away from the windows during the summer. I had some cupboard doors left to make. This was for the storage over the radiator. I really like using natural textures and materials in the interior instead of lots of artwork and colour. I think it really adds a calming feel to the space as well as a sort of understated classiness. I found some rattan cane webbing for cheap on a Chinese website. Normally it's quite expensive but I didn't need a lot so I think the one sheet I used was around £20. I wasn't sure if this idea would work or not as the cane webbing really needs to be stretched right to look good and I didn't have the time to research the best way of attaching it so I just opted to sandwich it between some wood and a thin layer of plywood. I basically just screwed and glued it down, it was quite brutal. Um, it doesn't look great at the back but who cares, it looks quite nice on the front. I did lots of other small bits and bobs and finishing touches like skirting boards. Uh, but the last bits of work I filmed was attaching the ceiling slats. These were just super annoying and I just kept putting off finish them. Actually, just attaching them to the ceiling wasn't too bad. Again, it was the labour of the sanding, cutting them into shape, staining and varnishing them that was the majority of the work. The main thing to do after that was done was just cutting the space for the ceiling lead lice to attach into, which took a little bit of fiddling. But they do look amazing though, and I love the feel that they give the van. So there you have it, I still have some small bits left to do, but the van is now 95% done and I love it. Thank you so much for watching and if you've enjoyed this video please hit the like button and do feel free to leave a comment. If you haven't already, you are so welcome to subscribe as well. And I'll see you next time.